talking about, I do think that's already happening, obviously. I think you stressed upon a lot more life and work balance, and I think that is happening. There's obviously restaurants shutting for three days, only working four days. Um, so yeah, it's a, I think a lot of them need to kind of open up, and if they are having difficulties, I think I know Dr. Yakshin is going to speak afterwards, mm -hmm. but just get that support. Don't be afraid to ask for help, because um, it's an industry where everyone wants to be big and macho and not actually say what's, what's happening with them. And if you do, I think you'll you you know you'll succeed a lot. Yeah. And uh, giving up. Alan, you've got two sites. So how 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 do you encourage young chefs, and how do we make it more positive uh, career choice for people? Well, they they're both um, fine dining, but one a bit more fine dining than the other. So they're 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 a, they're a little bit different in in. Uh, in what they are, what they offer, but they're also very different in location. So one of them's in central London, and the other one's in the Cotswolds out near uh, near Oxford. Um, well, actually, it's, it's an hour away from Oxford. It's quite uh, quite remote. So our biggest challenge out there is just getting people, uh, young cooks who want to uh, relocate and uh, are quite happy to live in a small village out in the country. Uh, once we get them to us, though, we uh, we we work from uh, we have a farm. Uh, that we operate and run, which is uh, the size of uh, nine football pitches, um, all grow growing organic vegetables. And uh, once we get people out and see the farm, and look at what the uh, what what the whole uh, the whole place is uh, is about, then we we tend to find that our cooks are, are really inspired because we're out in the fields every day picking the vegetables. Uh, the the farm makes all of our dairy. They uh, provide us with uh, with most of our meat um, as well, and our bakery. So what we what we do to encourage people is to show them, you know, what great produce we actually make there uh, on the site. Uh, in London, it's, um, it's it's different. You know, we uh, we d we have a car park out the back of the of the restaurant rather than the farm. Um, but then when, when you're in the kitchen, that's all about uh, precision and discipline. Um, working within a young brigade, my head chef's 25, uh, but he's worked in some fantastic restaurants and he's a, is, is an incredibly talented chef. Uh, so we're, we're, a, a fairly, we're probably one of the, uh, the softest of the Michelin star restaurants in town probably when it comes to how we treat people. Um, you know, we're, we're all about encouragement. We're all about... Um, Getting the best out of uh, out of the guys that work for us, and inspiring, but not by shouting and screaming, but by uh, by teaching, standing next to you, showing you the right way, you know, encouraging you when things go wrong. Uh, it's not to say that we don't um, lose our top once in a while, uh, but we uh, we we try and create a, a a nicer environment or a more. I I always think that you you work better. I've worked in kitchens where you're screamed at all day. Uh, and you're scared all day because you don't want to be screamed at all day, uh, and I think it translates to, to, to the food on the plate. It might, it, it, you know, it teaches you one thing, but the passion and the love for what you do should be a joyous thing. And when we cook, we should feel good about it, and we should feel. I I I I know I know cooking when I feel at my best. What I produce is so much better than if I'm under, you know, lots of pressure. So. I think it's important that what you're going to find is that there's, uh, there's an industry out there that offers everything, depending on what you want to do and where you want to go and the kind of uh, kitchens that you want to work in. There's every aspect from, as I said, three Michelin star uh, down to working in a school canteen. And there's so many different options in between. What you really need to do is find what you uh, enjoy the most and go for it. And as Ruth said, you know, find and and John that, you know, find the people that uh, within that section of the industry that are, are, are the best. Whether it's a school, it might be a, you know you want to go and work in a school canteen. Find a really good school where they're cooking really good fresh food. If you want to work in uh, in a, in a pub or in a brasserie, find the best ones. So make good choices. I think that's really important. The, the other thing that's vitally important is the training. And it comes in all forms and shapes. Um, I'm chairman of the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts and I'm at that at Westminster. And the development must go on even from there. 
there's nothing better than to see a person that you've had as an apprentice that you've developed from a 16 year old I've got a couple from 14 year olds where they come in from school not so much now from the 14 year olds but they do come in and they train with you within an apprenticeship they develop themselves go off come back and one of them is actually running um, my kitchens uh, so you know he's really working hard I've got three sous chefs that have been through an apprenticeship in a training program within the Royal Academy you know it's very very important in the structure of what you can get so there's so much there for you to actually take all you have to do is work hard and listen really work towards your own goals but using those little forms of structure because it is a very very rewarding um, industry that we're in and you can have a whale of a time uh, one other little thing if you can travel the world keep yourself out in the best places in the world be as happy as you can be but then you have to look after your wife <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's interesting, so, so you're saying about success stories, I know Glenn, you said it was you want to see um, more sec different sectors of the industry, their success stories championed and, and heard. So you said that's quite important, so people are aware that it's, you know, it, uh, fine dining is amazing, but there's also other avenues, which is the whole point of this panel today, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I never knew um, about the certain roles. When I went into, uh, as an apprentice into, into the hotels, I never knew the wide part, the path, the, the how big the world was in terms of what you can do with Marks and Spencers. Uh, working in their head office, developing dishes, and then training that in gave me, opened up my eyes in terms of the supplies that they worked with, um, the training, um, the traveling that went with that. And that excited me uh, that even more so because one, <laughs> I, I, li I like to be creative. I, I was one of those chefs that used to challenge and used to get told off by, by all means by just doing my own thing. But uh, I found my niche then. I, I knew what I wanted to do. So with those extra skills that I needed to learn in terms of, you know, making sure that my literature was good in terms of being able to write a menu, maths was very good in terms of being able to cost um, and do the commercials in terms of being able to take build a recipe and understand how much I could sell that dish for and ultimately how much money we could make at the end of the week because that's what it's about. You've got to please those guys who you're ultimately working for to make sure you can sell a dish consistently, well, and obviously that is making money for you. So those extra skills open my eyes up. And then, you know, you're working with other, other, other sectors as well in terms of the bar industry, the drinks industry, the, the, the nutritional part as well. These, these are all uh, part of fundamentally what you're learning, but so important for, for your careers as well, because you know you could easily go into those sectors from where you are now if you've got that certain passion or that certain skill set within you. Brilliant. And, and to highlight the different sectors, because my, my final question is, what can a student expect from a career in hospitality today? from your point of view. So I'll go with you, Rob, and we'll work our way down. I, th I think, you know, just looking at the students in front of us and what's been said on the panel, it, it's a fantastic industry, let's be perfectly honest with you. You, you never stop learning. You know, up until today, I'm still learning. Um, go into that industry, as we say, be inspired, be interested, maintain yourself excited. It, it's when you're excited and interested in something, it's really easy to give it 100%. And as chefs, you want to be doing that. So your food, um, the way you dress, the way you organise, everything is on that same level. Um, and just remember that hospitality, the diversity of it, like, like Glenn mentioned, whether it's working in a restaurant, working in a football stadium, or even a school kitchen, um, give everything 100%, enjoy it, and be passionate every day, and you'll go far. Liz, what about you? What, can, what can they expect from a, a career in hospitality today? Yeah, obviously I think that does depend on like which channel you decide to go down. But yeah, a lot of hard times, but also like the most fulfillment. I think I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else that makes me happier than when you get a good comment about food. When yeah. when you make somebody happy with food, I think you know that's kind of the best thing. Yeah. Thank you, Glenn. You? Yeah, that, we've said it a few times now, but hard work. You know, it does pay off what you put in, you get out. So if you're not in the restaurants, if you're, uh, if you're not on your days off, if you're 
I know you want to break, but you want to push yourself to the limit. Do you want to learn more outside of, for instance, you know, I, I might be in the casual dining sector, but I want to compete with these guys in terms of the, the, the food. So certain things like the competitions, Nestle Top Score, National Chef of the Year, through the Craft Guild, push yourself. If you want to do those extra things and learn more, um, yeah, uh, just to add more strings to your bow, I think there, there's so many other opportunities outside of just thinking about the career as well. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, Alan, I know you said that um, it we're, we're a community, so take advantage of it, which I think is a really important thing to mention. So. Yeah, the w well, as, a, as, a, as an industry, it is a community. We are, uh, um, we're all friends, you know, and we all help each other. And there's lots of, uh, these days, especially with social media, you know, there's lots of uh, interaction and, uh, and, and cross-referencing um, of, of what we do. But what I, what I want to say is, you know, as a final wrap-up thing, is that look, as third years now, you're about to leave college. You're going to uh, hopefully leave with, uh, with with a, a nice uh, Westminster College diploma um, and uh, go out into the world. Be free and know that the world is your oyster. Don't limit yourself by what's in front of your nose. Think outside the box and go for what you really want to go for and really test yourself. Uh, imagine what you want to do. Don't just take the first job that is presented to you or the fact that it's only five minutes down the road from where you live, that makes it more convenient or easier. Try and I imagine where you want to be. Try and imagine really what you want to do and without bounds, achieve that and go out and, uh, and, and do as much as you possibly can because as John said, you can travel the world, you can do so, th this, this industry offers so much. Uh, there's there's a, a, a long road to get to kind of our positions, but that road is rich and that road is enjoyable. Um, make sure that you explore as much as you can and you get as much out of the industry as you, as, as you want and you can do. And enjoy yourselves. Anything to add, John? Yeah, I mean, um, there's a question that I would ask everyone. Do you enjoy making people happy? And a lot of faces, yes, straight away. Believe me, if you enjoy making people happy, you'll enjoy this job. That's number one. And you do that with the creation of food. The other thing, nobody actually mentions it, but at your age, believe me, there's masses, and I say masses, of fun going on where executive chefs never know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you see them laugh. They've been there. There is a lot of fun in kitchens as well. You know, it is hard work, but there is that element of enjoyment. There is great teamwork. There is great camaraderie. You learn about cultures. Food is all about culture. And as I say, the world is your oyster. There is a lot of great things out there, just being a chef or being in the catering industry. So grab it, learn it, enjoy it, and develop it. Because you will be so much more advanced in every sense of the word of cooking that I'll ever be. Mine is a different generation. We are about touch, feel, and using the senses. Yours is much more about precision and what you can grow and how you can grow it and health benefits. It's all changing, but it's still a great uh, industry to be in. So just enjoy it. Brilliant. Can I just say before, before we end, as you do, number one, your first step coming out of college is you've got to... Uh, Go and find yourself a job. Present yourself well, okay? Uh, write yourself a, 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 a really good uh, introductory letter. And when you do get asked to go and uh, do a stage or a, a trial in the kitchen, turn up smart, turn up uh, well-groomed, stand straight, don't lean against walls, ask some questions, and make sure that the chef that you're, uh, you're in front of wants to employ you. The first thing I look at, and I can see straight away. And if I see somebody who slouches and they've come and they haven't groomed, thank you very much, move on. I'll say, just have a chat with him because I'm not going to interview them. And I interview everyone. So it's a very important factor. You know, you, you've got to be hygienic as well. They're simple little rules. It's about respect. Well done. That was a good point.
<laughs> so everyone just sat up in their chairs then, so they weren't slumped down. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> right, well, um, we've now got um, some time for some questions from the audience. So uh, does anyone have a question? If you put your hand up, you can get a, a lovely the staff canteen mug for your troubles. Questions? Don't be shy. No? Yes? Sorry, could you stand up? A yeah, thank you. If you could just, just tell us your name and, and who you want to ask the question to. Okay. <laughs> okay, what's your question? How long would you say the minimum amount, amount of time you should work in Michelin is? Depend. How long do you think the minimum amount of time one should work in Michelin is? Well, that's if that's where you want to go. Mm. You know, Michelin, Mich Michelin star kitchen are only one, uh, one, one, one avenue. It's not, uh, it's not everything and it doesn't suit everybody. Uh, if you feel that that's what you want to do, then um, how, how long is, you know, is it, well, as John said, I, I three years is, uh, is, is the optimum time. I, I imagine that people who work for John in, at, at the Ritz, you know, there's so many different uh, sections and, and parts of a kitchen to work in, uh, much more than, than there would be in my kitchen. You know, he's got he's got a bakery. He does after you know masses, afternoon tea and breakfasts and the fine dining and room service and all of these different things. So that's that's quite different. But even working in a kitchen like mine, where we have five sections, uh, you want to be able to nail every section. You want to have a, a great foundation in every section, uh, and that takes two to three years, uh, for sure. Um, but is what we were saying, you know, there's, there's, there's so many different uh, avenues to take uh, in the industry that Michelin stuff. Don't think of Michelin being the holy grail either. You know, you've got to nail it. If you want to do it, you've you got to commit because that is one hell of a commitment. If you want to work in a, in a Michelin style kitchen, you really have to think about uh, sacrificing as well, you know, because there's not so many. We, we work longer hours. Generally, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit more... Um, disciplined as a not uh, that's not not to take anything away from anybody else, but it's quite military, so it's uh, it's really uh, a very it's a very specific area to want to work in. It only amounts to a very small percentage of uh, of kitchens that there are in the UK. So if that's what you want to go into, absolutely go for it. But you know, be be prepared to uh, to really have to work hard. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any other questions? Any more questions? Well, we have a, a question on Facebook um, for you guys. Is um, how do you find working with college students yourselves? How do you find that? Well, well I, I think you know anybody uh, at any level can fit into any kitchen, but you know it's all about being organised. Over the years, you know, there's not a year goes by without us actually going into a college and making a dinner with them and using the students. Um, we have a thing called a doctor school where we have four colleges actually keeping a function for 150 with the academy. Uh, it's something that is natural to our industry. We want new people to come in all the time. So it's very important that we give you the opportunity to, to showcase your skills and for us to show you what we are actually doing. So Rob, you go into colleges a lot, don't you? So yeah, so I'm um, currently working with Farnborough and Loughborough. Um, just going into the restaurant to do like job care, uh, nice with them, and we do installation talks as well. I think there's a lot of benefit behind it if, if obviously we have the time to take a little bit of the restaurant world into into that, you know, level three or level two. Um, equally, uh, I used to sort of bring a lot of colleges into the big events if I was doing the big military events for for the Royal Family or, or RF uh, events like recently with RF 100, we would always in invite um, college students to come in and, and spend a day with us and I think it's very beneficial. And that goes down to, you know, l as learn as much as you can whilst you're at college, whilst it's, uh, you know, working um, with a neighbouring chef in an event or even as, as Glenn said, cooking at home. Brilliant. Well, I hope you've all taken a few things away from this panel. I just want to say thank you very much because I'm being told in my ear that I have to stop now. So <laughs> thank you very much. And a round of applause for the chefs, please. Okay, so um, we will give these guys a massive round of applause in a minute. But before we do, um, I just wanted to invite up on stage uh, Mark Lewis. Mark is, uh, Mark is the CEO from Hospitality Action. 
Today has all been about um, positivity, talking up hospitality, talking about what an amazing career it is. Um, it is a tough industry, and what we want you to understand is hospitality action is there for you. So if you can give you put your hands together and welcome on stage, Mark Lewis. Thank you, Mark. Wow, what a, an amazing 45 minutes of, uh, of, uh, of information and inspiration from the stage. Guys, I think a round of applause for Mark and for, for, for Cara from Staff Canteen. Do you know what, listening to that, I'm 51 years old and I've just realized for the first time I've chosen the wrong career. I should be doing what you guys are doing. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, I'd love to, uh, to, to, to be doing what you're going to do. It sounds like you've all got um, a fantastic career uh, building ahead of you. So I'd like to congratulate you all for choosing this wonderful career of hospitality. Um, you're going to have some fantastic times. As the guys have said, you're going to work hard. You're going to have to keep the faith from time to time. Um, but clearly, uh, the benefits are there for all to see. So congratulations from me on choosing this, this, wonderful, uh, this wonderful industry as a career of choice. I've got to say to you, um, although I wish you all happiness, health, and, uh, and fantastic careers, some of you, guess what, are going to hit some bumps in the road. There's, there's always challenges that, uh, that crop up through any life. Um, and you know what? When that happens, uh, I'd like to think that you'll give us a call at Hospitality Action. Hospitality Action is the industry charity for UK hospitality, uh, the, the UK hospitality industry. Uh, we offer lifelines to people who work or have worked in hospitality and find themselves in, in difficulty or crisis. We help chefs, we help hotel workers, we help bar managers, we help restaurateurs. If you work in hospitality and you, and you hit a challenge or a bump in the road, we're here for you. Um, as, as you see when you, when, when you, when you go uh, to, to restaurants yourselves, hospitality people are experts uh, at welcoming and delighting their guests. Uh, that's what you do. You create fantastic products and then you serve the products with a smile. But guess what? Um, you'll all hit challenges, as I said a moment ago, uh, behind the game faces and behind the smiles. Hospitality people come a cropper just like the rest of us do. Well, that's where hospitality uh, is, is there to help you. We help people in a million different ways. We help people with financial problems. We help people with marital problems. We help people who have mental or physical health problems. We help people with addiction issues. We help people who are the victims of domestic abuse. We help people who are elderly and perhaps lonely and isolated, having retired from the industry. As I said, we help in a million ways. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, and I want you to bear that in mind. I told you my age a couple of minutes ago. I'm, I'm that 51-year-old bloke who spoke to you at Westminster Kingsway. Uh, and in a few years' time, um, if you do find that you've hit a bump in the road, please remember me. Remember Hospitality Action. Give us a call. I wish you happy, healthy, prosperous lives. But don't forget we're here in case you need us. Thank you. Okay, you'll be pleased to know that we're almost done with you. Um, just before we thank the panel, there's one thing I want to say. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to the team at Solent. Um, like you, they're all students. They were on the road this morning at 7 o'clock this morning. We've never done this before. This is the first time we've done this. We like to make it really difficult, so that's why we're live streaming it. So it's been live streamed onto YouTube. It's been live streamed onto our Facebook page. Um, before you give these guys a massive round of applause, the team at Solent, please give them a massive round of applause. <laughs> okay, so very quick, is Sue here or is Sue, is Sue with us? Okay, I'll, I'll do something else. So, um, listen, this panel, John Williams, Alan Williams, Glenn, Ruth, Rob, they're not here for me, they're not here for Cara, they're here for you guys. John's going back to work in a minute, he's got, he's got a, a, an evening shift at the Ritz, okay? Rob was out in Luxembourg last week. Um, these guys are busy people. They're here for you. They're here to inspire you. They do that because they want to inspire you. Okay? It's an amazing career, hospitality. It's an amazing career. And you guys and girls are just starting on that journey. So thank you all very, very much for your time. Please put your hands together for the panel.
hospitality action, an appearance fee. They haven't asked for an appearance fee, by the way. Okay, it's not a case of, oh yeah, I'll do it, but you know, only if you pay me. Um, so we as the staff can team are giving hospitality action a thousand pound as the appearance fee for the chefs. So if we can just hand that over to Mark. We will get some, some photos with you with these guys in a minute, Mark, if we can. Uh, uh, let, let's, yeah, let, we'll say goodbye to everyone. Is Sue here? Okay, so whilst it's all been about uh, amazing support and you students and, and having these amazing chefs here, um, we also wanted to recognize lecturers because they do a really, really important job. They're the ones that are teaching you and getting you ready to go out in industry. Sue organized all this for us today. So as a thank you, Sue has been given, uh, courtesy of us at the staff canteen, dinner for two at the Ritz. It's dinner for two, Sue. If you need a plus one, um, I'm free. Um, it's dinner for two at the Ritz. So she's going to be dining with John and the team at the Ritz. They're going to look after you. They've got a book for you, a uh, signed book. Um, they've got a kitchen tour organized for you. So ladies and gentlemen, Sue Yates. Okay, thank you all very much for coming. We're going to do some photographs with these guys. If you want to stay around, you're very welcome to. I hope you've taken something away from this today. Thank you very, very much for coming.